morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your latest forecast update for the 17th of March 2025, covering the tropical rainfall across far north Queensland and cyclones over the Northern Territory in Western Australia. All of the details on that and plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things up in far north Queensland where there have been some heavy falls reported over the last couple of days with some very heavy falls reported over the last 24 hours and heavy rainfall still streaming into the far north Queensland coastline, especially around the Casbury coastline now and some heavy falls also into the Daintree coastline. We can see a very uh, strong thunderstorm currently building offshore from North Queensland, and that is driving in a lot of rainfall into the far northern Queensland areas. We've also had plenty of showers and thunderstorms overnight into the North Queensland areas around Townsville and up towards uh, Ingham and Cardwell. The rainfall there has temporarily eased off, but it will be returning in the next couple of days. The forecast for this is suggesting a lot of rainfall over the next three or four days, especially up in around far north Queensland. There's going to be plenty of rainfall over the next 24 to 36 hours. And then down in towards North Queensland, it looks like throughout the middle parts of this week, it is also going to get quite wet down there. So let's jump into the details surrounding that right now. On top of the rainfall accumulations that have already fallen, we're still expecting more rainfall to come through throughout the remainder of today. We've had 24 hourly accumulations around Port Douglas and the Daintree Rainforest area up around that 150 millimeter mark. And considering the rainfall offshore, which is heavy and it looks really heavy and quite gnarly on some of the radar imagery, but it's not actually that heavy. It's not ridiculously heavy. We're talking about rain rates here between five and 15 millimeters an hour. It does get a little bit heavier as you get out to the core of these thunderstorms further offshore. We'll be seeing some more intense falls out there, but they're not currently over the coastline and they're also not really moving towards the coastline either. And whilst the rainfall is very heavy across some of these areas in these thunderstorms, they aren't a coastal base right now. They're more sort of out to sea. So there will certainly be some more rainfall coming through today, but it's not going to be anything heavy around the Daintree Rainforest area. It's just going to be that pesky moderate to uh, moderate uh, heavy kind of rainfall that's going to be causing those rises in those river levels and just making things all round unpleasant as we start the working week up there. Uh, moving down in towards far north Queensland's Cassery Coastline. We're expecting that rainfall to pipe up again later on this afternoon and evening. You can see very heavy rainfall currently on the forecast around the Innisfail area, and that's precipitated between the uh, convective forecast models as well. But it looks like that uh, rainfall there hasn't actually materialised, so the rainfall is likely to be a little bit lighter throughout the next couple of hours along the Casper Coast compared, compared to what the forecast has been suggesting. We are still expecting a return to the heavier falls, and they could be locally intense later on tonight into early tomorrow morning. We're going to be seeing some very heavy rainfall as this uh, kind of thunderstorm band, as this trough line moves closer to the coastline and it's this kind of banding stuff out here that we're seeing that's very heavy on the radar imagery you can see it out to sea here at willis island and some of the bands here offshore from Cairns. this is very slow moving stuff and whilst over the last hour it doesn't look like any of this rainfall has any kind of forward motion it is very slowly moving towards the southwest and that means that later on tonight where these thunderstorms and as this trough line pulls this rainfall further south we're going to be seeing that rainfall collide with the cassowary coast and expecting some heavy rainfall accumulations later on tonight for locations between Cairns down through the Yarraba Peninsula, Innisfail, Tully, uh, South Johnston, then as far south as Cardwell and Ingham, even we'll be seeing some heavier falls down there. And the rainfall is expected to be quite intense tonight. Locally intense falls can be expected, and you can see it on the uh, major forecast models later on tonight around the Cardwell Gap area. We are expecting plenty of rainfall in this little uh, kind of corner of North Queensland here. The rainfall will then uh, ease off as we get towards the early hours of tomorrow morning into the later morning hours of tomorrow, and then we're expecting the rainfall to pipe up tomorrow evening again onto the North Queensland side of things. We could be seeing some very heavy rainfall actually in shower bands uh, later on tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening for locations between Cardwell and Ingham down through Townsville, Air Bowen, and then down into the Whit Sundays and Mackay. We could be seeing some isolated heavy bands there. The GFS for the last couple of days has actually been very supportive of some very heavy bands of rainfall moving into this part of Queensland and there are actually still a few discrepancies between what the major forecast models are suggesting for North Queensland. So I'll get to the forecast for this in just a few moments. I just want to touch on the rainfall accumulations but for North Queensland there there is some heavy rainfall coming your way by the looks of things tomorrow night and into Wednesday morning. Rainfall accumulations over the next 36 hours for far north Queensland are heavy and they certainly are going to be uh, making themselves felt, that's for sure. So this is the rainfall accumulations for the remainder of today and into tomorrow as well. Now the GFS forecast is generally the low baller of the forecast models, but you can see major forecast models suggesting a further 50 to 100 millimetres around uh, the, uh, the Daintree Rainforest coastline, and I think that's a plausible forecast as well. Whilst the rainfall is still looking quite gnarly on the radar out there, it isn't anything crazy compared to the very heavy showers that they've been seeing over the last couple of days. So that's why rainfall accumulations and numbers there aren't anything absurd around Port Douglas and Mossman. I personally expect a further 100 to 125 millimetres for the wettest of locations into the Daintree. The majority of falls along the coastline will be between 25 and 75 millimetres down towards Cairns, which can in, in itself expect a further 75 millimetres. Down through the Yarraba Peninsula and then into the Cassowary Coast, expecting falls anywhere between 100 out to about 250 millimetres with some isolated to widespread very heavy falls.
falls tonight expected into the Tully and the Johnston River catchment areas, expecting some significant falls around Fishery Falls as well, with falls potentially as high as 250 millimetres as well. The other major forecast models not really on board with some very heavy rainfall. There are still major discrepancies between these forecast models. The Access has been calling for some pretty heavy rainfall throughout the remainder of today and into tomorrow as well along the coastline. But as you can just see with all the major forecast models, there are some major discrepancies between them. And the Axis forecast model, whilst I have been a very fan, a big fan of the convective forecast modeling uh, over the last couple of days, I must say this morning it looks like it is a load of boogies. I mean, have a look at this rainfall accumulations throughout the next, uh, what's that, about 32 hours up around that 1300 millimeter. That is not going to happen, that's for sure, uh, outside of the danger rainforest. So this is why I'm discounting the Axis convective forecast model for today's forecast. Uh, if I had to put an exact number on what rainfall accumulations we're expecting around Innisfail and Tully tonight, I'd be saying anywhere between about 75 out to about 250 millimetres. It is going to be a return to that heavy showery stuff, so whilst there will be some uh, widespread moderate falls embedded in this showery stuff that's going to be coming through with rates between 5 and 15 millimetres an hour, there will be some heavy bands of rainfall with rates up to around 50, even as high as 100 millimetres an hour that will be coming through, and they will tip the scales of heavy rainfall in the favour of some locations over others. So again, if you are looking out for some heavy rainfall later on tonight, don't get your hopes up. It certainly looks like they don't need any more rainfall as well, especially considering a lot of the observations down here have already picked up over the last four or five days, uh, accumulations up around that 600 to 650 millimeter mark. So again, far north Queensland, not desperate for rainfall right now, and it certainly looks like some more rainfall is on the cards. It should clear out by tomorrow afternoon, and again, as we head down in towards north Queensland, you can see that on the convective forecast modeling, there are some heavier showers beginning to develop further south along the uh, North Queensland coastline, you can see heavy showers and streaming in from the southeast around the Mackay area into the mountainous areas outside of Mackay and up uh, north around the Proserpine area. It definitely looks like we could be seeing some heavy rainfall in those areas later on tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening. And I think Proserpine might be a bit of a wild card considering if you have a look at these winds again, be coming out of the east or even the, uh, towards the east southeast of some of these locations here. That's prime conditions and a prime setup for the Proserpine area and some of the hills around Proserpine that feed into the Proserpine River. We could be seeing some very significant rainfall accumulation around here. That is, of course, a maybe, and there are still a lot of ifs and buts and maybes about this rainfall that we're going to be seeing across North Queensland. To be honest, I think the chances of us getting a very good forecast for these locations, considering it is going to be coming in in the form of showers, is highly unlikely at this point, and it is still quite dependent on the development of a very weak and broad tropical load in the Gulf of Carpentaria, which I'll touch on in just a few moments. Uh, so again, it looks like this is going to be kind of a take it as it comes. Uh, my personal estimation right now around the Townsville area rainfall accumulations could be anywhere between 20 to 80 millimetres, probably on the lighter side of that, but if we do get some heavier shower bands coming through tomorrow night into Wednesday morning, we could be seeing some heavy falls around Townsville, with falls up to around 120 millimetres on the eastern side of Townsville. Uh, some of the mountains outside of Townsville as well could be picking up around that 150 millimetre mark, especially as you get further north up towards Rollingston, Paluma and Ingham, and then uh, further down towards the southeast as well, we could be seeing some very heavy falls across this sort of area outside of Bowen. Again, like I said, the rainfall forecast, very uncertain at this time. Widespread accumulations between 20 and 80 millimetres look possible across the North Queensland coastline, but generally speaking, we're not going to know until this rainfall is actually upon some of these locations. And like I said, there could be some wild card accumulations between Proserpine down in the mountains outside of Mackay, especially considering this rainfall is going to be coming in from the east. And I am showing you kind of the uh, best case scenario here in terms of rainfall. The GFS is actually calling for some really significant rainfall to materialise here. And if we do get that trough activity that we were talking about a couple of days ago, we will be talking about some very heavy rain bands. And I would just like to bring it back to that trough activity. If we take a look at the radar imagery with the satellite overlaid, you can actually see that there is some very heavy and some pretty stagnant and very well formed uh, convective um, thunderstorms developing offshore from North Queensland. This is typical slow moving trough stuff that can deliver some very heavy rainfall. So I'm not ruling out the possibility around the areas between Townsville down towards Mackay that we actually see some very slow moving, very heavy bands of rainfall developing as a result of that trough as it gets down there. Again, we'll revisit it in tomorrow morning's forecast update where the picture should be crystal clear, but at this point, still a lot of uncertainty. If you're confused or your head spinning about the forecast for North Queensland, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. At this time, it's just a little bit too early to tell, unfortunately, for these locations about how much rainfall is expected. For locations further south as well, I know locations south of Mackay down through Rockhampton, they are parched and desperate for some rainfall right now. You can see rainfall accumulations will be up around that 25 millimeter mark, and if we do get that trough develop as what the GFS forecast is suggesting, we could actually 
actually be seeing some pretty respectable rainfall accumulations further south as well from residual showers streaming in on the back side of it. Again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but we're going to have to revisit this in tomorrow morning's forecast update. There's just so many ways that this weather event could swing. It could either be a couple of showers or it could be a robust low pressure trough setup, which will deliver a couple of hundred millimeters to a few select locations. Again, we'll wait and see in tomorrow morning's forecast update. There's still, like I've said for the nth time in the last couple of minutes, so much uncertainty with this. Let's dive over into the Gulf of Carpentaria because that's the rat bag area that's driving all of this stuff up in far north Queensland, all of the rainfall. We've got a very broad low pressure system developing in the Gulf of Carpentaria right now. You can kind of see it on wind observations. We're seeing northerlies up on the Cape York Peninsula, swinging around to easterlies down on the Northern Territory Carpentaria coastline, and then very weak westerlies uh, up around Cape West, Lone Island by as well. But again, that is indicative of a very broad low pressure system beginning to develop, and you can see it on the pressure bars right now. It is a monsoon low pressure system. Uh, a few forecast models have been rumbling at this, maybe becoming a tropical cyclone. That's very unlikely at this point, but we are expecting plenty of rainfall into the southeastern corner of the Gulf of Carpentaria, and just along the Queensland Carpentaria coastline in general, expecting some very heavy falls right along the coastline from showers and thunderstorms. They're going to be very slow moving over the next couple of days as well. Some good thunderstorms tonight, right through tomorrow into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as well. So locations such as Mornington Island, Burktown, Karumba, Gregory, and even out towards Croydon as well, we could be seeing some heavy showers and thunderstorms moving through those areas in uh, periods of time, especially in the afternoon hours over the next five days. The rainfall should clear off as this tropical low slash uh, monsoonal depression gets itself over the Northern Territory and provides some much needed rainfall there. The forecast for this monsoonal low is actually very uncertain. Normally these monsoonal lows take a very obvious path. They slowly develop in the Gulf of Carpentaria and if they don't get to cyclone status, they move over the Northern Territory, uh, the top end of the Northern Territory, then out uh, over Western Australia. But right now, still a lot of uncertainty with this weather event here just because it is so broad and so slow moving. The Matt and Julian Oscillation, which is the driver behind all of this rainfall that uh, orbits the uh, planet counterclockwise every about 40 to 50 days, that's the driver and that's why we get these things called monsoonal bursts in the wet season every month and a bit. Uh, and it, this one here has been, it, whilst it has been strong and certainly providing much needed moisture to far northern Australia, it's kind of broken down over the top of Australia and as such, the weather patterns really don't know what to do and that is a real uh, thing that can happen is the weather patterns really have no major drivers that they develop and they just kind of sit there and that's what the forecast models are currently encountering right now. They're having a very difficult time developing these systems into uh, actual systems here and telling us where they're going to go. So whilst these systems will eventually develop into something, we just don't know where or what they are going to do for these locations. One thing's for sure, plenty of rainfall expected into the backside of this week across the northern parts of the Northern Territory, especially on the top end, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. There'll be an abundance of thunderstorms up there across the entirety of the top end of the Northern Territory. And then showers and thunderstorms expected to be very widespread across this weekend, across interior parts of the Northern Territory, even extending in towards Western Queensland, the northern parts of South Australia and interior parts of WA as well. Now, one thing's for sure is we are expecting a low pressure system to then begin slowly developing as this tropical low moves uh, in inland through the Northern Territory and over and towards Western Australia. And that's because a lot of rainfall is expected to fall as a result of this system here. And if you have a look at rainfall accumulations over the next seven days, we're talking numbers up into the couple of hundred millimeter uh, realm across northern parts of the NT and into WA as well. It doesn't look like these numbers are willing to load in here, but you can see between the GFS forecast and the Axis forecast as well, lots of rainfall expected across interior parts of the Northern Territory, which is going to create plenty of water and an abundance of water that's going to flow into lakes and rivers and then start a phenomenon called the Brown Ocean Effect, which is very unique to Australia. It happens in a few other locations around the world, but it's where thunderstorms and even cyclones can develop over dry land or normally dry land because of the amount of moisture that they can evaporate out of lakes and rivers. Uh, and that's why we're expecting plenty of rainfall to continue to be ongoing across the NT and parts of Western Australia into the later parts of next weekend. And even in towards the uh, last week of March, we could be seeing an abundance of rainfall through there. Now, the future of this low pressure system is kind of obvious. It looks like it is going to eventually head up over Western Australia. And we're going to see the development of a tropical low slash tropical cyclone offshore from WA much later on into the forecast period. There's one of two ways that this could go. We're expecting a monsoonal trough to begin developing offshore from Western Australia. And this leads me nicely on into the WA cyclone forecast. We are expecting that monsoonal trough to develop south of Indonesia, which will likely spin out a tropical low and potentially a tropical cyclone or two uh, by around Saturday or Sunday, the 22nd or 23rd of March. It could be earlier, it could be later. And you can see between major forecast models, there is actually signs of a tropical cyclone developing from this monsoonal trough by around Thursday or Friday. It'll be a very quick system to develop by the looks of things if it does get itself going and it will actually hug the WA coastline. Conditions look quite healthy for this system as well and certainly something worth keeping an eye on over the next couple of days. And we can really start to see some precursor convection that's going to meet up with a massive 
massive amount of energy from these dramatic thunderstorms blowing up over the broom area right now. I mean, just take a look at how intense some of these thunderstorms are. So we can already start to see some of this energy here, whether these thunderstorms develop and then thwart off this developing tropical layer here, it's still out for the oceans to decide. And it could, like I said uh, multiple times this video already, swing one of two ways. If these thunderstorms do peter out and this low pressure system wraps itself up, it will be a small system and it is likely to head for the West Australian coastline before recurving either down towards the southwest or the west. Uh, and again, it will be interesting to see what this system takes. In short, for locations between Karatha and Carnarvon, which you can see from the GFS forecast, are actually looking down the barrel of maybe a tropical cyclone moving through their area uh, by around the uh, next weekend. It's looking highly unlikely at this time. We're going to need to wait a couple more days to see what the forecast models actually make of it. But at this time, it isn't, an, it isn't unlikely that we see something developing in this area. It's still looking very uncertain at this point. And if something does develop, it looks like it is going to remain exceedingly weak. But this is your precursor information here. If we see this as a trend developing through Tuesday and Wednesday, I'll be the first to let you know that's for sure. But definitely for Karatha uh, down towards Carnarvon, keep an extra eye out on the weather forecast over the next couple of days. One thing's for sure, between the major forecast models, a few showers and thunderstorms expected as a bit of a trough develops this weekend. And we could be seeing plenty of thunderstorms across the Pilbara region as well with these tropical low developments. But anyways, back to the initial system getting across the Northern Territory and then into the heartland of Western Australia. We're expecting it to then emerge offshore from WA and whether it picks up the energy or gets moved into the energy, that'll be a developing tropical cyclone by next weekend and into early next week, or it becomes its own system. Still a lot of uncertainty out there, but it will take that typical path in the end of a monsoonal depression across the interior parts of the Northern Territory, heading out over Western Australia and having a second chance of life developing into a tropical cyclone out there. Major forecast models have been pretty supportive of tropical cyclone at some point between the 22nd out to the 27th of March, uh, and it could actually get to a reasonable uh, intensity as well from that monsoonal low depression thingy that's going to form in the Gulf of Carpentaria. So that kind of out of all three systems that the West Australian coastline has to look down over the next couple of weeks, that seems to be the most likely system at this point to develop. Still, though, the forecast really uncertain at this time. And then it looks like much later on into the forecast period, we get a bit of a low pressure system developing over the Kimberley region heading into the last couple of days of March. That looks like it could be a bit of a rainmaker, that's for sure. The GFS hasn't really bought into it right now, but it is kind of developing another tropical cyclone up there. And then the axis is also calling for a bit of a tropical cyclone to develop offshore from the West Australian coastline into the last five days of March. Again, the forecast is really uncertain for this time, and I want everybody in West Australia's Pilbara and the Kimberley and also down into the yeah, Gascoigne region not to be making preparations or considerations right now for this tropical cyclone. Over the next two days, just keep it in the back of your head that there is going to be tropical cyclone activity, and it is looking exceedingly likely that at least one or two locations get tropical cyclone impacts, whether that's rainfall or a full-blown tropical cyclone landfall in the next 14 days. There is a very high chance now on the West Australian coastline that that does uh, actually happen over the next 14 days, but the chances are for your location and you getting caught off guard by it is very, very minimal at this time. So just watch the forecast, but don't act on it over the next couple of days. Check back in on the Cyclones Oz channel on Wednesday and I'll have some more information surrounding this and what we're actually expecting. But right now it is looking like a pretty turbulent time across the tropics of uh, West, not just Western Australia, but the Northern Territory and Queensland as well. Plenty of stuff to be talking about, that's for sure. And a lot of headaches and heartaches for these tra uh, tropical cyclone trackers that are trying their best to give uh, accurate forecasts here, but they keep changing on a moment's notice. So a very difficult time as a tracker as well. And that's why I appreciate all of the support in the channel. That's for sure. Anyways, that basically does it for this uh, morning's tropical cyclone, tropical weather update. There's nothing else to really talk about across other parts of Australia. There is certainly some interesting stuff happening elsewhere, but it really isn't worth airtime. It looks like we've got that massive high pressure system in the uh, Great Australian Bight, which is keeping things cool, calm and collected and windy. If you live over in Western Australia as well, those winds have been really strong, especially last night. They were blustery, that's for sure. But anyways, that is all that I have time for today. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and I could not run the show without them and their support is much appreciated. And I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.